Hey fish heads, how's everybody doing today? Hopefully you guys are doing well. It is long overdue. We need to get a spray session in and I've been wanting and looking forward to doing this one for a little bit now. I have this fantastic bait. It's a great swim bait. It's a perfect size for what we're going to try and replicate today from Monday. Um, Monday Hackett sent me this. It's a single jointed soft tail fish body and we're going to put this pattern onto it but today instead of just getting right into the spray i want to take a little bit of time and just break down this pattern because there's a lot going on in this thing so this is a it's a spotted sunfish um i think you'll see them in texas i could do a little bit of a backstory on this if you guys are interested in that and figuring out where this thing comes from Okay, so if you guys want to play along with me on this map we're looking at, this is uh, courtesy of Peterson Field Guide to Freshwater Fish in North America and Mexico. The distribution of this tough little fish, now the, it only gets about 5.9 inches, uh, 15 centimeters, so roughly this little guy is small or on the smallish side of the sunfish family um, in regards to its cousins and, and other sunfish um, it is called, or the scientific name rather, is Lepomus humilis. Now, Lepomus, you'll notice, is also in the black bass. So they're pretty, they're pretty closely related. Most of them are in the sunfish family. So we're looking roughly 5.9 to 6 inches, and that would be the male orange spotted. Gets a little bit bigger than the female, and they are brightly colored fish. Um, even when they're panicked and freaked, the, it doesn't completely fade down to silver. And you'll notice that those uh, spots are incredibly bright, orange and red. Even in some cases in the breeding sunfish, they'll be a bright red. So this little guy is all over the place, but prefers silt-laden and sandy-bottomed uh, turbid water, which is basically flowing water or rivers, moving water systems, although they will hang out in lakes. They have been introduced all the way as, as northern as Canada, up into the well, probably the southern areas of Canada, just across the U.S. line. And uh, both the male and the female play a role in guarding the eggs until they're free swimming. Then the young leave the nest just like everybody else that spawns in water. So they are an important food source for larger fish like bass and catfish, and they are not endangered nor threatened. There's nothing, no plans in place because they're a very hardy, very common fish, but they're incredibly brightly colored. They're, if not the most colored, they're right up there with pumpkin seeds. Um, so I'm excited to paint this guy. Now, as we look at this fish, um, I'm, I'm amped because I can see a lot of different things that we're going to need to do with this. So this is not going to be necessarily an easy build, but as we're going from the nose on the right hand side, the nose and the face through back to the eyes. So we're going to be working from right to left as we're going through this picture together. I'm going to say we're going to start with a, um, with a black primer. I want to start with a black primer on this coat the entire thing with black and then probably mesh it um, and in order to get that scaling pattern going on once we mesh this bait then we're gonna overspray that black primer with white and then we're gonna build up working from light to dark like I normally advise you guys to do because it's a much easier area to blend when you're working from light to dark uh, you don't want to shoot the bright colored um, paints directly over black it's just it's not going to look as good unless you you really want to deepen that shade of whatever color you're using but I would go from light in the white primer and then work into probably down the uh, the chest and the throat of this area probably going to be using some gold or that sunset red onto the belly of the fish and then up into the fish we're going to be streaking white and using Maui blue I can see on the forehead of this fish, ahead of where our, um, our dorsal fin is, that we're also going to be probably using a little bit of sepia and then maybe just a little bit more black to get that really kick, kick butt pattern on the back end towards the tail. There are a lot of really deep ruts 
that are dark colored in this tail. They're probably not black. Um, I, I really can't say that I've ever seen an actual true black in nature color. Um, usually it's tones of brown and tones of darker, like a darker gray. But as we're looking at this fish, there, there are some of those dark tones. So we can probably get away with like a detailed black magenta back towards the tail. Um, and I think we're going to have some fun with this. So that's my breakdown of how I want to kind of do this. So we're going to start with that black primer. We're going to work into a mesh over top after we heat set. Then we're going to build from light to dark and then lay in the colors as we need to. This thing is going to get bright, bright red eyes. Um, as you can see, I've pulled the eyes off. The eyes are actually, they were mounted on the outside of, uh, it's like a little, little stub. So they were the eyes that came with it were not red and they were mounted on the outside of that. So we've pulled those off. We're ready to rock and roll and let's get started. Let's paint something cool today. I've sort of already talked my way through what my basic plan and layout for this is going to be. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some detail jet black from the Wicked line of paints. Just enough so that I can get both sides because we are going to mesh this. being very careful not to get too much into the tail. A lot of the times I will lightly throw a mist on that. Uh, it's going to get knocked off with fish bites over time, but I've never minded doing that. So now, I, don't, I know a lot of times I already have the base layers on there. We've already talked about what's going to happen kind of using everything up that I've got. I'm pretty much out of paint. I just want to every last drop that I can squeeze out of here. I'm going to do it. Just a little bit more of this black. And you can also come at this from an angle here. I'm shooting right onto it from the back. And that will also allow me to get these edges here, which I do want to do. So I'm about a year into this air compressor now. It has not gotten louder over time. It stays about the same. Obviously, I'm not trying to raise my voice to speak with you guys, and I'm very happy with it. So a year into it, this California Air Tools um, eight gallon tanked compressor, it's fantastic. Um, none of my fixtures are, are leaking. I have just a tiny bit of leak on this side right over here. I don't worry about that. Kicks on 15, 20 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how much I'm actually spraying. So super happy with it. Uh, that's the loudest part right there is when it kicks back off. But yeah, I could not be happier. It was a fantastic investment. And thank you, Gerald Novick, for pointing out that that is a really good compressor to work with and if you guys are interested in getting one of those and you're tired of your tankless your tabletop you want something that's a little bit more beefy I've got a link in the description below for you guys on how you can pick one of those up I have got the primer heat set it's black primer we've got the mesh on and I trust that all of you by this point in the game can put mesh on pretty well um, the only thing to remember if you're brand new to the game is that as many cinch points as you can is always a good idea just pull it as tight as you can and try and cut it in a, in a manner that's going to be consistent with the length of your bait uh, I cut a little bit of the edge off and you guys constantly ask me what kind of where do I get my mesh what kind of mesh do I use it's called it's actually called a bunch of different things most commonly these days you can find it as sisal mesh s-i-s-a-l sisal mesh it's also known as spiderweb tooly mesh or metallic metal mesh 
there's a number of things that it's called but uh, the easiest way to look for it and I do have a I always have you guys linked up in the description below so you can find it through me you can find it usually at Hobby Lobby you can find it at Michaels Arts and Crafts you can find it Joanne Fabrics some Walmart super centers carry it so if you guys don't want to go that Amazon route you can certainly but if you want it and uh, and you want to get it fairly fast you don't want to have a whole lot of headache I do use Amazon I use it all the time and uh, it's fairly inexpensive so there you have it so we're just going to go ahead and put opaque white primer on this over the black and uh, I've doubled this mesh up which is fine the mesh is not going to be as important in some areas because if you're looking at that picture that's up in one of the corners, I'm not sure which side is going to make most. You know, I say the, the upper right hand corner and then the last one, or one of the last ones, I ended up putting it in the opposite top corner. But it's whatever corner it makes sense in where it's not going to cover too much of what's going on in the shot for you guys. Because I want to make sure you guys get the best angle and view that you can. So just kind of burning through getting all this paint used up and making sure that I get the bottom coated that real well and used up all the paint in the chamber. Now I am going to heat set this quickly come right back on camera and then we're going to be adding in some blue. I'm looking at this design here and I think I might even want to throw in a little bit. I was thinking I was just going to go with the Maui Blue. I'm going to go ahead and pull both of these out. I'm going to start with just a little bit of Opaque Sky Blue. Always preach to you guys to get the junk out of the way. And that is definitely the case today. We have some goop in the top of that. Hopefully that won't translate into a whole bunch of stuff going into the chamber. I don't think it will. I pulled most of that out. So, from the nose, I'm still, I'm blasting about 40, 35 to 40 right now. And I'm just going to do this bottom trail edge up to the lip. I'm going to do both sides like that. Get the cheek. Eh, there might be a little bit of gunk in there, but I'm still going to be able to complete this. It's not bubbling in my chamber. It's just might have a little tiny clog going on. And that's it. I am all squared away. Got that all cleaned out. We've got a really good stream coming out now. Now I know that you guys are thinking, oh, there's, there's still some white in that. Yes, there is. We're going to come back and lay that in on the back side of this. I'm going to completely coat the top part of this with Maui Blue. And then I'm going to come back in and when I'm going to lay the white in before I lay in the flame orange and there's going to be a little bit of sepia on the head, but I'm also going to use that, to, I'm going to use that white once this is heat set to just kind of notch out a little bit of area where I am going to be using that sepia. So we'll get a fairly good ample amount on here. There we have it. I think one thing that I want to do, let me heat set this real quick while I'm talking to you guys. One of the things that I want to do is I kind of want to get a little bit of texture to this design. So one of the things that helps me add in texture is if I take a detailed darker color like this black magenta and I don't really even need to clean the chamber out I'm just going to add a little bit into that and at the same rate which is right around 3540 make sure the blue is gone and just angle this you guys see how I'm angling that and that does make a big big difference it really helps texturize this lure and it gives it that 3D type of a format to where it looks a lot more realistic and more like scales that might actually be moving as the fish moves through the water. 
So we'll do that. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep rolling the camera just so you guys can see how I would go through it if I weren't talking to you. Um, pretty much it's, I can go about three or four times as fast when I'm not teaching, which is what I normally do. But I really like to try and break stuff down for you guys. And I, I'm trying lately to please everybody because there are some of you that just want to see the actual baits being made. You don't want to hear me talking, which I can totally understand that. I can talk the paint off a barn. Um, I do love to teach. But some of you are really enjoying the teaching format. So I try and mix it up a little bit for you guys and uh, give you the best of both worlds as best I can. So I'm liking how that's looking. I'm not going to heat set that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back with a thinner. You guys asked why I use different whites. Opaque is a really good primer to lay down. It's thicker paint if I'm trying to coat over or mask over a darker background that's on, on the base. Uh, you'll see me use opaque white frequently. But if I'm just trying to lay down a little bit of different color, use it as a superficial or a top mask, then I'll go with this thinner. Jacquard is much, much thinner paint. So it looks like just this area right through here on the forehead, on the dome, as it were, it's going to get some white. The bottom of the lip is white, so we're going to return that to its former splendor here, as it were. Just try and hit the base of that. Go just a little bit into the throat, but there's a good bit of, you'll see that flame orange that's going to come up through the skill plate and the cheek just a little bit. And another cool thing that I like, and you'll see that once we finally take the mesh off, this uh, pectoral fin is really, really well built on the cast that it was formed from. So I like that pec fin on here. So the other thing that I'm noticing is back behind where we would find the ear flap on this bait, which we will put in, I'm seeing, looks like one, two, three, four, five going back. So we're just gonna quickly make a line there quickly make a line there, three, four, and five towards the tail. We can do that at a fairly rapid pace. And that is the lines that you see on this particular sunfish. And then just kind of line that up as we go, no pun intended, line that up as we go to the other side here. Three, four, and five. And go over that a couple times because I really want to make sure that it stays white and I might be out of paint here. So there we have it. Now we're ready for some sepia and then some flame orange underneath. Then we're going to add in, I'm going to probably do that um, mostly by hand because they're fairly large blotches, but we're going to add in that bright, bright red dot system on this fish. Picked up some Wicked Detail Sepia because I, I see some brown in the top of the forehead. So we're working about 20 PSI now and we're just gonna fill that in. All of this is done while the mesh is still on the bait because we do want to differentiate the scaling. There we go, and add just a little bit of detail into that. Now there is a little bit of brown on the back side of this. We're going to leave this tail pretty much alone. And I think maybe just a little bit of brown towards the underbelly, towards the tail. This is a um, Dale Rowney FW Artist Acrylic Ink in Flame. And it's a beautiful, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And we're going to just kind of lightly get it on down here. Just a little bit on that belly here.
Man, that's pretty. Such a contrast. I mean, serious contrast between that blue. But in this, I'm going to add just a little bit. Now, there's the hint of uh, top fin on here. So I am going to add just a hint of that onto that because as you can see in the the actual photograph of this it is red 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 or flame orange as it were and then we're going to add just a little bit into the middle of this there for working my way up the cheek and right to the edge of where the blue meets this I've added just like three drops of this sunrise yellow and one drop of this pearlized tangerine. And I'm going to mix that together real quick here just to lighten it up just a bit. You know what? I might even put one drop of white in here because I really want that, that peach color. I don't want it to be as dark as what's in there already. Uh, I want a little bit of a contrast, so I'm adding one drop of white. I'm doing this directly in the chamber. And that is looking groovy. I think I'm good with that. Let's see what it looks like. Yep, digging it. My pressure is down around 15. I don't need to blast this out of here. It'll use a little bit of trigger control. And I'm just going to go over this edge here. Lighten that up just a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. Kind of overlap that brown a little bit. There we go. There's that real pretty creamy orange peach color. Very cool. And I can even kind of texturize this. I might come back with a little bit darker of a layer on the bottom of this. Let's go ahead and pull off this mesh see what we've got so far. Should should be starting to look like something. And with any luck, this mesh will come out and mimic those scales that I'm looking for. That black will be underneath. And uh, I'm really liking how this is coming out. Got that bright, bright flame on the belly fading up into that softer sunrise yellow and pearlized tangerine, which I, I like. I think we've represented that pretty well. I kept a little bit of this white in the bottom lip and the cheek like I wanted. Got just a hint of that red just back through the tail. It's not in this tail, but I like it there. Um, both sides are consistent. We've got the lines lined up, which I did freehand. I did not expect for that to look as consistent as it does, but it does. So happy with that. Everything so far, pretty happy with. I think we've got the placement in this sepia pretty good. Now we need to put on, now this, this ear flap, <laughs> it's super, super uh, defined, I would say. Um, and I'm going to need to cut it to kind of match that because I really want to try and match what's in this picture. So let's do that. I'm going to be using one of these set lock hook cards, real thin. I'm going to cut a couple of stencils here. So one of the things that I want to do, and I'll bring this up as close as I can without getting fuzzy and out of focus on this GoPro, um, but I can't wear the Nikon on my chest. It would just not be practical at all. So I'm going to try and eyeball the curvature of this gill plate and cheek flap. Now there's a, a section of this that's completely triangular and then we've got a little scoop down here on this gill cheek. So all I'm going to do is try and line up as best I can on this corner. That and then down, but then it takes a curve 
and it may not be exact, but it's going to be enough to where I'm going to be able to work with it. I think I'm happy with that. I might actually cut it a little bit more like that. Okay, so we'll cut that out. And then looking at this ear flap, it comes up at an angle from the gill plate, from the triangular point, it's right, it's kind of above, still underneath the lateral line, which again, this, this <laughs> I could not have asked for a more perfect bait to work with for this particular pattern. I'm sure Monday knows that. Thank you, Monday. All right, so we'll just do that. Okay, let's see how that translates when we cut it. So we're going to come down with the exacto knife. When we put this on, I think we'll be able to work with that. I did pretty good, almost exactly what we need. This is a little far back, but I can scoot that up when I spray it. But I'm happy with that. Now, let's see. Well, I don't want to get too big on this, but I do want to kind of follow the way it looks in the picture as best I can, try and bring you guys over so you're actually seeing what I'm doing. It's hard, the, this GoPro screen that I'm working with gets dark. It'll stay on for like five seconds. I know I can reset that, but I want to try and keep the battery life as well. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna kind of use this as a cutout. And that should do what I need it to do. I think I'm good with that. So we've got this. And we've got this to work with. So these are the two pieces we're going to be stenciling. And let me load some black in the chamber. You guys got scooched back up. I hope there wasn't a loud noise there. So make sure my hands are dry, at least this glove. It's hard to, hard to gauge if my glove is dry. Because I just scooped a big old piece of gunk out of the jet black. Okay, for my next trick, this goes back into the helping hands. Make sure that's on there tight because I need to turn this on its side. And then we're going to pull the pressure down to right around 10. Working at 10 on pressure. Make sure I have a fairly decent... Yeah, I got some good stuff coming through. But this is all trigger control. So, I'm going to line this up. I'm not going to go all the way up into the forehead. I don't think that that's necessary. But staying consistent on what I preach and try to get you guys to practice is lining this up and shooting onto the card so that the overspray goes on and creates your shading. I always recommend that. Now you can bring this completely down and get that and then slide this up. Once we slide that up, just come around, continue that all the way in. And I just want a little bit. We don't have to, to crush it on shading. You just want that little hint of definition on this part of the bait. So I think we've achieved that pretty well. The other thing that I didn't mention is that we need, I want to cut out uh, a stencil for this pectoral fin, which is really masterfully built into the mold here. It doesn't stick out. It looks like it kind of goes back into the mold. So it's a little bit raised and then it shoots right in. So I really like that. But let's finish getting this done. Flip this over and make sure that this side is dry. And then flip it. And you can, the cool thing about these helping hands is that you can work at whatever angle works best for you. So I'm just going to come from the top here, top down. I'm, again, I'm not going to go all the way to the forehead. I'm just going to kind of angle this as I work. And get this. There we go. 
just kind of work it around for it to suit your needs. And again, just get that little hint of definition. And you can actually go in like I did on the other side. Do that a little bit there. And then come in here with the same accent. And now you've got some really cool definition there. And I like that. I like that a good bit. So we'll pull the other piece of stencil out. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to make this, because uh, that really is beautiful. Um, this pectoral fin on this. I'm j I can't, you'll see it when it's done. You'll be like, wow, that's really beautiful. So we're going to set this directly down. And you've noticed that I kind of notched this to a point the way this plate is. And that's how I use to line up. And then we've got black loaded. And then just get that completely set. Now we've got that in. If it doesn't match up completely, I can also cheat a little bit and use this Vision Elite. And because it's light fast and it's waterproof, I can finish that edge right there. Quick, easy cheat. So it's not something that I want to necessarily set my stencil back down on, on the wet paint or stop working long enough to heat set this and then keep going. So there we go. Run that around. I wonder. I'm trying to see how long this pectoral fin is. Well, that's oddly cool. Through no design or malfunction of my own, this edge is as exact a length as this pectoral fin. So when I'm cutting this, I can actually use this as a little guide. So I'm going to set that down, make that notch. Now I want to kind of line this, I'll line it up with the correct side since I did it that way. It would be easier when I get it cut out to kind of gauge it, but I think that's pretty decent. So let me cut that out. The only problem with being OCD is that sometimes I put stuff away too fast where I forget that I'm going to need it again. And this is just going to be a loose jagged edge along the bottom here and then come back into the top now let's see how that lines up because if it doesn't line up well I can always cut another piece of stencil but I try and use as much of one as I can let's see how that's going to look it looks perfect there we go. Couldn't do that again if I tried. Don't aim for perfection. I certainly don't, and I am far from it. But sometimes all the planets line up and prayers up into the sky, and you get something that turns out exactly like you want it. That's going to work. But I don't want black. I want a detailed magenta for that because this is actually a very transparent fin, and we want that to translate onto the bait itself. So I'm going to empty this out. We're going to come right back. I'm going to bring this down to camera level so you guys can see what I'm doing and play along. I'm just going to add this and lay it down as carefully as I can. Try and completely get that to lay flat. I'll get it a little bit darker where it's going to line up where there would be a little piece of bone there. And then we'll go to the outer edge. And we'll do this outer edge there and underneath. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing. Come down like that. What am I doing here? I'm doing that. Adding this in. 
getting that dark on this corner real light along the edge along this top edge and then continuing just ever so lightly just to give it a little bit of definition and I think that we've achieved that for me I've always liked to use a paintbrush for this part it's just me probably because I've been a canvas artist and I have I still have a steady enough hand so let me preface that by saying if you do not have steady hands you don't feel like you're going to be able to do the detailing in white around this ear flap by all means stencil it in two sections use um, one of Russ Allen's fin wheels or um, gill stencils they're fantastic they might not be exactly perfect for every single bait but they're going to get you close enough to where it's going to look like a million dollars no matter what you do you can't really mess those up for me though I like a little bit thicker of a paint so I'm going to come back to this createx opaque I'm going to get a scrap piece of paper for this because I don't want to waste a little medicine cup that I mix in drop that hint they're medicine cups you can get medicine cups online for super cheap they're way cheaper than the same thing that's labeled as an artist mixing cup it's ridiculous get the little medicine cup but we don't need that today because I'm just gonna do one little couple of drops here that's more paint than I need get that that sucks that's all right that's what rags are for I just don't want to get any of that on the bait that isn't where it's supposed to be so because the picture shows this coming around on both sides that's what we're going to do on this both sides and for this I like to kind of draw down and I'll use my hand to kind of steady my hand and see if I can pull this off I normally yeah, I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do it this way uh, I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing Just come around both sides and meet at the exterior part. And see, that's the picture. <laughs> I just, I don't know if it's just me. I don't like it. I, this is, I'm, I'm not a fan of how thick that white is. But again, that's, uh, that's why they make pens like this. Even though it looks kind of like that in the picture, it's too too thick for me doesn't look natural and I want this to look as natural as possible I have a paintbrush in my mouth sorry so we're gonna oh, see and do the same thing tip this just a little bit more and then come back and do this side but I'll show you the trick that I use if I screw it up. I'm not going to screw this up, I don't think. Now see, that's okay for me. The other side's way too thick. So let me get this in some water real quick. I have a little brush jar that so I don't have to go to the sink right away. So I'm angling this pen almost at a 30, 30 to 35 degree angle. And I'm just making enough of an impression in the pen to where I can come back and tip these edges and make this a little bit neater and maybe just a little bit thinner of the white line and once you have this paint heat set you just do it a little bit at a time don't go buck wild like a box of crayons I just I feel better with this I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it not normally when I do the edging in white I only do the bottom but this picture specifically is the one that he gave me and I want to try and give him exactly what he wanted I try to do that on all of these heat set that flip it 
And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to drop this down. If there's a glare, you have my apologies. I think we're okay with the glare factor where I'm at. I'll know when I edit. But just come back with this pen and lightly trace around the edge of this black. And you can really make some oops go away. Especially if it's a dark. Unfortunately, it's only black that I can do this with. But it is a really handy, cool cheat that I use often because I'm not perfect. Only one entity in this universe that's perfect. And it ain't me. All right. So we're going to heat set that. I like that way better than I like the, uh, the thicker one. Sorry, Monday. My apologies. Not really. I'm not sorry. Um, I like the way that turned out. So because this is a swim bait and because the, the dots are bigger, I'm using a little bit bigger of a round tip artist brush to make this happen. This is a round brush, round tip number five. I normally detail with a double zero. And it looks like we've got just a few around the face, um, up into that cheek plate. So I'm just going to put a couple here, kind of randomize that. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to go crazy on the gill plate, but I do see a couple there. There's also a couple around this ear flap. All right, and then it looks like we've got, go one, two, three. And go three on each side, four there, one here, good, reload. I know this part could get a little bit tedious and boring for you guys, I apologize if it is, but um, just to give you an idea of how much work goes into something like this, it is a good bit of work. And again, I'm not going to go completely nuts. Just try and get these on as best I can. Should be all right. And then flip it. Pretty happy about how this blended down. Get a couple in here, just a couple here, one back there, and then run it down. Make sure you, got, you guys are still in focus, yep. Actually, reload. Let's heat set and finish this bait. I am very excited about how it looks so far. What do you guys think? This fish has red eyes. It's a no-brainer. These are real eyes. They're 3 8 inch, 9 millimeters. They're going to fit perfectly on this little stub that is provided for the eyes. Um, they're intended to stick out on this, which means we really got to super glue the you-know-what out of them. Um, because we don't want that to come off, but 3 8 inch, real eye, red, they're made in pairs, so they're made specifically to match up one on each side. Let's get some super glue on here. Bring you guys into the mix. Oh, that's plenty. And that's plenty. 
this is the point where I always end up super gluing my thumb. It, it never fails. So here is side one. Here is side two. We gotta flip that over because the pointy side always faces forward 90% oh, of the time. I, there's always exceptions to the rule and I have seen it in nature. And I've super glued, I knew it, I knew it. I super glued my fingers together. What a, look at that, seriously. What a dumb, oh no, 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 no. Ah, oh, that sucked. Okay. Have a great day. No, I just have a great day, everybody. I just super glued my, that absolutely sucked. That was not intentional. And you know what, we're just gonna, I'm at the point where I should probably ditch this eye. That's a little bit too much super glue. I knew it. I knew it as soon as it dipped on there. And what'll happen is, see this eye is completely useless because it gets coated and then it doesn't look good. It gets all cloudy when you try and clear coat it. Ah, gosh dang it. It's all right. See, it's human. That is why we never profess perfection. I think I need this one right here. Wow, crevassi. He even prophesies, I, I'm gonna super glue my finger. There we go. It's, it's been that kind of week, folks. It happens every once in a while. Uh, that needs to, let's see if I can hit a home run this time. There we go. Line that up. And, 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 we gotta sign it. And then I'm going to brush the clear coat on. I can dip one side. So once this dries, I gotta let the super glue dry thoroughly. But once that does dry, um, I'll be able to dip this side. Only thing is that once, see there's a little ball that is up inside of this that allows this, and the buca bulls are exact, a lot of swim baits are like that, where this is free spinning. It's not a solid piece like you find on, uh, on regular old baits. And they're meant to be free, free spinning. They're actually awesome. Um, but you can't put too much, like if you dip it, you gotta be quick about it, and then you gotta pull the excess off so that it doesn't gunk up and get inside and freeze. Cause that's never fun. More than likely I'll probably just go ahead and brush this entire thing. So thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. I will show you the bait when it's done, as always, if not in this video, in the next work update. So thanks for hanging out. I hope I was able to teach you guys a few things today. This is the Orange Spotted Sunfish from Monday Hackett. I hope I've done it some justice. I hope you enjoy the bait. I will shoot a couple of still photos in decent light to show you. I know that there's shadows that are bouncing all over the place. But uh, I believe that we've been able to do it some justice. So you guys take care and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting. Esa chica quiere selfie, selfie que yo parezca en él Como que ella quiere Disfruta la noche, lo anormal Creo que el novio teme Que su relación va a terminar Se da cuenta que no necesita alguien más